Lots of investing and very little sleep sends Ryan a little bit cuckoo. And I think the monkeys have gone a little bit crazy too when you hear some of their investment ideas today. Holiday homes in Turkey? Are you mad? Healthcare sector is going very well at the moment. I've already got two or three uh, shares in that sector. Uh, Smith & Nephew now looks the pick, FTSE 100 company, going very well. Uh, recently announced a billion pounds worth of revenue coming in. Uh, ex topped expectations from analysts. Uh, it looks a very nice buy in the sector for some decent upside uh, by the end of the year. A uh, complete gamble now. Uh, this is a completely knackered old uh, car dealer called Pendragon. Shares have come right back, not surprisingly, to 8 or 9p. And I've just bought some from my ISA as a, as a gamble, as I said. Uh, could easily double and could easily halve as well. So I'll get out if there's any, si any further signs of trouble. But it's one of those shares that could have uh, shot down too, mu too much and uh, there could be some nice upside. Now it's time to find out what's getting the monkeys in the studio excited. Right guys, uh, welcome back. Now, Paul, you're going to be up first uh, this week and I've heard that you're going to be talking a bit about Sweden, my favourite nation on the planet. I'm sure you know why. <laughs> so, what have you got for us? Yeah, actually, though this company is listed in Sweden, um, actually it really operates in the UK. Its customers are from the UK. A company called Betting Promotion on the Nordic growth market. That's the Swedish equivalent of the AIM. Very difficult to trade. You really need to look for a broker that specializes in that country. You can find them on the web. Um, but this company is a very misunderstood company. It acts like a market maker if you invest in shares, that's the, what it's the equivalent of, or a bookmaker if, if gambling is your particular world. A P of five, yield of 10%, mm. can buy its shares back, still receive cash, never been in debt. Company employs hardly anyone, 75% gross margins. This company is stunning. Well, Paul, this actually sounds like a little bit to me like ASOS, a bit of a rough diamond on the net. Well, <laughs> maybe. I, I think the key thing is that a lot of uh, investors would have always wanted to invest in Betfair, something that was never available to mm. them. This is actually the closest thing you can get to investing in Betfair because its growth is tied directly to Betfair's growth. Um, and that's the reason why they're an interesting company for me and that's why they have UK customers. Okay, David, well, you're up next, and I'm hoping that you brought something out of your very, very obscure draw uh, for us today. So what have you got for us? Yeah, well, mine is obscure, not quite as obscure as that. Um, uh, mine is, um, is, is involved in a fabulous business, great time at the moment, to be buying second homes, big, developing big second home projects in places like Cyprus, Turkey, also MENA, the whole Middle East area. It's a company called Dolphin Capital Investors, DCI. You can buy it on the London stock market. The last stated book value was about 227p. I mean, although I say that in inverted commas because you never know, it's probably gone down now. But it's deeply, deeply, deeply under its net asset value and, share, and the share's got cash backing about 65p. And ultimately, long term, it's, it's a really well-run company, Gr a really big project. A holiday homes abroad, I mean, is this the right time to invest, Stephen? I'm slightly worried about the sanity of my fellow monkeys today. Look, who buys these, these properties? It's people in, in Northern Europe. What's happening to property prices in Northern Europe, They're, they've weakened, and so people aren't feeling wealthy. They haven't got the capital to invest in these, uh, uh, in, in these holiday homes, so I'd, I'd be wary. wary of it, I think. <laughs> Now, Stephen, uh, hopefully you'll be keeping the international flavour of today's show going. Uh, so what have you brought for us this week? Well, what's been happening this week is, again, the dollar appreciating um, against the pound, against the euro. In fact, it's appreciated against the euro about 6% over the, the course of, uh, of August. Um, and what that means is it's good news for our, uh, our exporters, but it's not so good news for importers, particularly those who are in uh, retailing in, in groceries. So you're talking Sainsbury's and Tesco's here, right? Precisely, precisely. It looks like these are the companies that are going to have to swallow the, the, the increase in costs. So for investors with holdings in, in this sector already, you might want to look at either reducing the holding, maybe even hedging it, or possibly even taking a short-term position over the short term. So short Sainsbury's and Tesco's. Now, um, Paul, does the uh, dollar impact your portfolio at all? I have quite a bit of investment in America, so I, I should do relatively okay out of it. I, I heard the short Tesco's, and I think that's a definite route that you might look into. You might also look at shorting someone like Dixon's, DSG, as they're now called. Uh, and finally, uh, David, uh, what are your thoughts on a, a rising dollar? Um, yeah, well, I mean, before we before we came on there, I, uh, Steve and I did a little, popped over to the Sockgen Covered Warrants website, 
Um, and they've got some covered warrants on the dollar. Um, and there's one called SX63, snappy that. Um, and we sort of ran it through their, their scenario selector. And assuming that the dollar goes from 187 and appreciates to as much as 175, which I admit is probably overdoing it a bit, but um, that's what I'd say, six, seven percent increase would yield you 133 percent in by, say, middle of October. So if you are, if you do think that the dollar is really, really going to be strong, that could be a really good play. Okay, guys, it's great to get some positive news and we'll uh, see you all here next week. So there you have it, an international themed week with hints of madness. We'll be back on medication next week, so we'll hopefully be a little bit more sane. But in the meantime, go to 4wm.co.uk to read the blogs of the monkeys. See you next week.